Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the latest trailer for Marvel's Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which assures us... I will always be there, old friend. Checkmate! We are getting an MCU Illuminati lineup, including Patrick Stewart, Charles Xavier. What is this movie? I gotta admit, I've outdone myself on this one, folks. Analyzing this trailer frame by frame for details I don't think anyone else is insane enough to see or to talk about. And uh, yeah, I'm also gonna include some stuff in the TV spot version of the trailer and clues in the official poster. And thanks to Truebill for sponsoring today's video. More on them later. Let's get started. Every night, I dream the same dream. And then... So the trailer opens in Strange's Nightmare, a frightening hellscape covered in bones and skulls, dead trees bent askew, and in front of him, a representation of the Sanctum Sanctorum melting into inky nothingness like the other New York buildings we saw in the first trailer, all evoking the comic book ink melting of reality in What If Episode 4, except this isn't exactly Strange's Sanctum. It's significantly thinner than we last saw in Spider-Man No Way Home, and it is one floor taller. The the effect is a more gaunt structure, like a croaking haunted hotel. What was his healthy sanctum fortress is now a withering skeleton of itself. And notice in the sky is a glowing red eye, reminding us of course of the red edges of Wanda Maximoff's hex reality in WandaVision. This whole nightmare could be being projected into Strange's mind by the Scarlet Witch. Since the commercials in WandaVision were confirmed to be messages from Strange to Wanda, these two share a psychic link. Now this Strange has a patch of blue sewn into the Cloak of Levitation, an inverse of the red patch on blue of Defender Strange, who saves America Chavez in a second. Blue versus red seems to be an important point of contrast in this film. Strange has been shifted from his normal red tones to blue tones, along with a lot of the settings in this, to signal passivity, all to contrast Wanda Maximoff's red chaos and violence. Now, on the other side of the Sanctum Doors, there's a reverse shot of Strange's entrance from the first trailer. Now we see how the stormy sea has claimed the whole sanctum structure save for the central staircase which now extends up and up and up into nowhere like a trick luring one to heaven, except it's not. It goes into this hellish red eye. And at the base of this staircase, these weren't there. The past times we saw the sanctum, now these two statues, one male, one female, both bearing torches, may be representing the Maximoff twins. Then a teacup shatters on the ground. Behind it looks like the wheel of an old wheelchair. Now this isn't exactly the wheelchair of Professor X from the X-Men films, but I suspect a lot is gonna be changing for whatever cameos show up in this film. Then America Chavez gets strung up in front of a star portal, which, if you look closely, opens up to endless more star portals within that portal. This is our best known power to kick open these star-shaped portals, and we might actually be seeing the origin of her powers right here. We actually saw this same setting in the first trailer. I think it is her home reality, the Utopian Parallel. In the comics, the Utopian Parallel faces destruction from black holes, so her mothers sacrifice themselves, their particles dispersing throughout the multiverse, and the creature attacking her here may be, go with me on this, the Demiurge, who is the embodiment of Earth's sentient life, in the comics the original source of her powers, and we should mention is one final form of Billy Kaplan Wiccan Wanda Maximoff's son, which could be how this film ties the fate of Wanda and her sons to that of America Chavez. Then again, the Demiurge hasn't really been shown to be this hostile and demonic. Actually, another possibility here, this entity's ribbony appearance, like glowing electrical tape, could connect to Strange's spell, the Crimson Bands of Citrac, which he used to restrain Thanos in Infinity War, which could make this fella maybe Citrac himself. Now, the TV shot actually showed in this moment an alternate Defender Doctor Strange, hair tied back in a ponytail with stripes, saving America Chavez from this thing, using what looks like a three-dimensional version of Strange's normal flat eldritch magic to hold off the entity, which would then lead to the shot we see in this trailer of that same ponytail Doctor Strange tumbling through a star portal, a shot that flips upside down to find us back with our Doctor Strange in bed. But is it 
our Doctor Strange because his hands are fully healed. When in past films, Strange's hands are always meant to be forever scarred and weak. There's an iPad left open on his bed, coffee filters into test tubes on his nightstand. Strange said in this part of the trailer that he has the same dream every night. Hell sanctum, his alternate self saving a kid. And then the nightmare begins. So the nightmare might be this reality that he wakes up into, a reality where he never became a sorcerer, he never injured his hands, and really just aged into a lonely douchebag falling asleep with his Pornhub tab still open. Moving on. The nightmare begins. I did what I had to do. Now, when Strange says the nightmare begins, we should also acknowledge the possibility that the demonic entity Nightmare could be the villain of this film, as this idea was floated by the original director, Scott Derrickson. The Marvel Studios title card turns purple and has tentacles snaking across the letters, evoking the limbs of Gargantos, but also one of the multi-limbed creatures in What If, which this movie seems to be showing the live action versions of. In fact, on the poster for this film, in the lower right corner, one broken shard of glass shows the shield of Captain Carter, hinting that Haley Atwell may show up in this film as a live action version of that character. Then Doctor Strange conjures these red orbs. If you look closely, they are coming from the dark hold on the floor there. That's Marvel lore's Book of the Damned that appeared on WandaVision first in Agatha's possession before it was claimed by Wanda. That's why the magic he conjures is now red like Wanda's chaos magic, as we saw her conjuring in that final WandaVision scene. We could be seeing a depiction of the various universes being connected in this movie, with Doctor Strange trying to locate one world of particular, and in the foreground of that shot, that looks like that is one of Maximoff standing there with him. But then, Strange, suddenly afraid, slams all this magic back into the book, as if he's trying to hide it from the person in the room with him, and on that page, you can see a triangle, perhaps a symbol of Marvel's Illuminati, a location he wants to hide from Wanda Maximoff, for reasons I'll get to later as we move on. To protect our world, you cannot control everything, Strange. Opened the doorway between universes. And we don't know who or what will walk through it. So Strange argues that he did what he had to do to protect our world our world, as in his actions saved his universe at the expense of all other universes. Strange used the Time Stone to give his universe an improper advantage to undo Thanos' snap, and more recently, he used his magic of the runes of Kof Kal to basically gaslight and warp society into a whole bunch of plot holes. Mordo warned us about this, that when Strange would push the laws of reality like this, the bill comes due. Always. And like Strange in that what if universe bypassing an absolute point, this Strange's reality has begun to melt the same exact way and opened itself up to interdimensional threats. We see a new look at this melting from the rooftop, individual bricks breaking off, cars floating in that blizzard, headlights still shining. Now the melting of the buildings here seems to merge into these black strands, reminding us of the Ancient One's dark branch timeline that she warned Bruce Banner about in Endgame. And here it's not just that reality is melting into nothing, but that chaos is spinning into one beneficiary destination. On to the next clip. Wanda, what do you know about the multiverse? Viz had his theories. He believed it was dangerous. He was right. So we see Scarlet Witch once again holding the seance in the Kamartage courtyard. We know that's where it is because you can tell from the statues behind her in the floor beneath her, the same tiling that we see beneath that Minotaur sorcerer later. We get a better look of him in this trailer. This is Rintra from the comics. But yes, the Scarlet Witch is probably the one attacking Kamartage because actually in the TV spot, the sorcerers in that courtyard raise their shields to some floating figure overhead. I'm pretty sure that is Wanda. Now compared to her look at the end of WandaVision during the seance, her Scarlet Witch wardrobe has evolved. Her sleeves now cover her her arms fully, and darker tones streak through her chest piece and her tiara. Also, as we pointed out before, the tips of her fingers are black, similar to Agatha's fingers when she would use dark magic. And I like this right as we hear Strange say, Wanda, a shockwave blows out from her body. Now, in her orchard, if that is what it really is, Wanda tells Strange that Vision had theories about the multiverse that it was dangerous. So, despite Vision warning Wanda, she still created an alternate reality in that West 
new hex and now continues to peer through alternate universes to find her children. And yes, this peaceful orchard with sheep is probably an illusion. Because later in the trailer, as Wanda points out the double standard of Strange breaking the rules and him getting to be a hero, Strange is wearing the same outfit as he is here in the orchard, suggesting that Wanda is actually in a much darker place in this moment, both in her mindset and in her literal surroundings. Moving on. I'm sorry, Stephen. Your desecration of reality will not go unpunished. So Strange brings America Chavez and Christine Palmer to the ruins of what I think is the utopian parallel. And Christine wears this sleek blue outfit. And that's because this might actually be an alternate Christine Palmer whom Strange found working at Illuminati HQ. Because the TV spot reveals Christine in these clothes plus a white lab coat in their detainment sector. Then Mordo, or perhaps an alternate version of Mordo that might actually be Sorcerer Supreme from his native reality, detains Strange using these nifty looking handcuffs. And I love the design of these because it's a mix of analog sorcerer machinery with runes engraved into that spinning lock in the middle. But overall, they have this chunky silver chrome of something more futuristic, something that might be connected to the vibranium tech of these Ultron Sentries. Ultron Sentries! Who escort Doctor Strange in this awesome location that looks like a Supreme Court Hall of Justice, you see four kneeling winged statues and then a warrior with a sword and a ring. The way a certain multiversal warrior, Captain Carter, emerged from a circular portal with her sword in hand. Now this whole interior, the glass ceiling, the curved staircases, the classic columns, is actually the interior of the British Museum in London, a place I've been to many times. I love the British Museum. It's famous for having the Rosetta Stone, one of the earliest artifacts that anthropologists have used Used to translate and decode cross-reference old languages, which is super fitting for Charles Xavier to model his multiversal nexus point on such a cultural touchstone. Now, assuming this is Illuminati HQ, I find it fascinating the parallels between this and the Citadel of He Who Remains in Loki, which also had a lit tower, inner columns, and four statues in its central chamber, one of which was mysteriously destroyed. We never got an answer to what that was all about. Now, there are six chairs on the Illuminati panel, but we only see three members members in this trailer. Could Kang have been a fourth member of the Illuminati who is cast out, leading to him constructing his own crude imitation of the Illuminati Citadel, a Citadel, and a sham judicial bureaucracy of his own run by three puppets. It's just a theory. Now, if you're keeping your fingers crossed that the Beanie Baby collection in your mom's attic is going to regain its value and all of your money concerns will be gone, our friends at Truebill are here to help take some of the pressure off of Claude the Crab and Patty the Platypus. Truebill is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. The personal finance manager allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, monitor your credit score, and build your savings all in one place. I really like how easy Truebill makes it to safely and securely identify recurring charges and cancel unwanted subscriptions with just a tap. It's also got some nice credit score monitoring tools to give you a little nudge when something fishy might be happening. Not fishy like Bubbles of Beanie Baby, but you know, like scammy. Truebill helps set budgets that automatically monitor your spending by category, get friendly notifications when you've exceeded your budget, and visualize your spend to earn ratio over time. So get started with Truebill today by heading to truebill.com slash new rock stars or by clicking the link in the video's description. That's truebill.com slash new rock stars. Next section. We should tell him the truth. Baby, yes, one of the biggest reveals in MCU history, one that we will be unpacking for months to come. Yes, that was the voice of Patrick Stewart, Professor Charles Xavier in the Fox X-Men films, now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a member of what is almost certain to be the Illuminati. Now, Marvel's Illuminati is a secret alliance of Tony Stark, Charles Xavier, Reed Richards, Doctor Strange, Black Bolt, and Namor. Black Panther was initially gonna be part of it, but he backed out. Actually, in Iron Man 2, Tony Stark had a little app on his phone labeled Illuminati. Fun little little Easter egg there, but here the Illuminati, if they will still go by that name in the MCU, seem to be serving as a multiversal governing body with representatives from across universes. By bringing Fox X-Men characters into this, they're building on the meta logic from Spider-Man No Way Home, Marvel Studios is now adopting formerly separate cinematic universes as mere universes within their multiverse and expanding to the Fox X-Men titles. But if Patrick Stewart is a representative from a separate reality, that could limit how much of that separate reality we actually see in this movie and which other Fox X-Men
been cameo just yet. Like Ian McKellen Magneto, Hugh Jackman Wolverine, maybe, maybe not. But Ryan Reynolds Deadpool, very likely, as he has been long confirmed to cross over to the MCU, and now that door has been opened. I mean, this could also give us some context, finally, to why Evan Peters was cast as Wanda's brother, Pietro, in her hex. Now, yes, the show producers did say this is just a Ralph Boner joke, but the logic is all in place now. We never saw Ralph after Wanda's hex, so it could just be as simple as Wanda's ability to warp reality might have caused her to pull the likeness of a Pietro from the nearest adjacent universe. Like, if Tom Holland Peter Parker were to die in the MCU and Wanda Maximoff wanted to create a pocket reality where Peter was alive once more, the Peter in that hex might look like Andrew Garfield. If that makes sense to you, Evan Peters actually being Pietro from his Fox X-Men timeline, crossing over into WandaVision could make an equal amount of sense. Now, meanwhile, I don't know if this is the Charles Xavier from the exact Fox X-Men timeline, whatever that was at the end of that series, because one thing that was clear is that Charles Xavier died in the year 2029 in Logan after it was revealed he accidentally killed all the X-Men, or most of them. I think it's likelier that this Charles could be from a branch timeline within that universe, because time travel screwed up a lot of stuff there, let's be honest. He actually could be something closer to a live action version of the X-Men 97, a version of Charles Xavier that existed in a branch timeline that eventually discovered multiversal technology. Now yes, there are six chairs. So let's try to fill these chairs, who they belong to. Two of the figures are seated and one walks in with a cane. So I'm wondering if this could be Charles, who in this form has found his ability to walk once more. Now the seated figure on the left wears a form-fitting suit that you could say looks a lot like the vibranium armor of Black Panther. And yes, this Illuminati lineup may include a new actor playing a variant T'Challa. However, I think this particular figure just looks a bit more slender in the arms like Reed Richards. But that would also make it less likely to be John Krasinski. Yeah, let's be honest, he's jacked Ryan. But let's slide over to that other seated figure who is hooded. Could this be Sorcerer Supreme Mordo? Or alt-reality Photon or Spectrum Monica Rambeau? Or were those Ultron sentries a clue that one member of this panel is actually Ultron Infinity from What If? Or that brilliant ship of Theseus White Vision from WandaVision? But my favorite version of this would be this could be a reality in which Tony Stark's Ultron protocol actually succeeded instead of turning on him, which led to him being able to evolve into the superior Iron Man one played by... Tom Cruise? <laughs> I mean, we've heard this speculation for years, and now it just seems all possible, doesn't it? But let's focus on what Charles actually says here. We should tell him the truth. What truth? The truth that Strange maybe didn't do anything wrong? Or that him becoming a sorcerer was a mistake? Or that all of this is just some Kang exposed sham organization? Perhaps, but I think the truth here is that the MCU that we have loved all these years is not the core reality of this multiverse. That instead, we have actually been living in an incomplete post House of M reality where mutants have been erased this whole time. We just didn't see it as anything wrong. And now it is time to fix that. Let's move on. Things just got out of hand. Okay, some real bonkers shit here. Doctor Strange and America Chavez fall through a reality with dinosaurs, a T-Rex fighting a Triceratops, but then to top that, they insanely smash into an animated cartoon reality. This could be one way doors open to crossovers with what if this could actually be how the animated Captain Carter gets roped into this. Then Strange and America explode into cubic puzzle pieces, a visual that looks like a mix of Drax's reality stone hit in Infinity War and Joe Quesada's art of the Scarlet Witch on the House of M variant cover. Some of their blocks look like stones from a statue, and you can actually see the rows of Steven's individual teeth still intact in his gums on each block. On to the next clip. You break the rules. Look out! I become a hero. I do it, I become the enemy. So yeah, it looks like Wanda will invade Illuminati HQ and get into a huge brawl with someone who looks like they're going binary the way Captain Marvel does. But if you look at that person closely, this is a woman of color. Now I know some of you think this is Tom Cruise with a goatee, but that's just a contouring of her cheeks. Tom Cruise's figure is not this womanly folks. This is definitely either Monica Rambeau or her mother Maria Rambeau. Maria Rambeau's call sign was Photon, and in the main MCU, she died of cancer during the blip. But in WandaVision, Monica Rambeau powered up into the superhero we assume will either be Photon or Spectrum, and the moment that happened, her body was split into several alternate selves 
as she passed through that hex wall. And I think one of those alternate selves could be this one we are seeing now. And if you think about it, Monica fighting Wanda seems to be the most epic collision considering these two were both there for the Battle of Westview in WandaVision. Then we see the attack on Kamertaj in the tea room that we saw in the 2016 film, including Master Hamir returning from that film. Then a close-up of America Chavez gives a good look at her wardrobe. Stars embroidered on her jean jacket, along with the phrase, Amor es Amor, love is love, and a flag pin signaling some LGBTQ plus representation. Gargantos throws the bus with an ad on the end for La Llave Coffee, the key, with the tagline, Unlock a Better Day. And then over to the left, a phone booth has an ad for Celestial Tea, the magic of tea. Then I love this shot. Strange looks up at another alternate sanctum with a statue out front, a statue that has no facial hair. Though in this New York, greenery and oddly curved wind turbines cover all the buildings and white flowering trees line the streets. Trees like the ones in Wanda's fake orchard. So in Strange's nightmare, we saw the darkest timeline. Here, this looks like the brightest timeline where a variant Strange has used his powers only to better society. Moving on. That doesn't seem fair. Okay, so interesting. Two Wandas meet each other, and this is Wanda's Westview house in WandaVision. You can see two scooters in the background belonging to her sons, Billy and Tommy, one of their baseball gloves on the floor there. But this place is wrecked. The staircase handrail, the balusters are broken, as if there was a fight between these two Wandas. And the standing one is the one who is barefoot. Youch! I actually wonder if this kneeling Wanda tried to recreate the Westview hex to have her children once more, but failed. And now, defeated, she's letting the darker side of her identity take over. If you think about it, the last time we saw her in WandaVision, her consciousness was split into two conscious selves. Something people who astrally project normally can't do. There was one in casual wear brewing tea, and then the other one in the Scarlet Witch form searching for her kids actively. And now, I am wondering which of those two is actually the deadlier threat. The one who's searching for her kids, or the one who's just sipping tea not giving up? We see that shot again of Mordo striking Strange's cuffs. Now I'm wondering if Mordo might be doing this on purpose to free Strange so that Strange can help them fight this invading Scarlet Witch. But it might be too late because a huge explosion from red chaos magic tears through the HQ, leading to these elaborate fireworks as we think Rambo's form gets blasted through that explosion. Then this other sorcerer uses a sick move with a lasso to attack Gargantos. The TV spot actually showed America Chavez beneath this gross underbelly. And in these close-ups, you can see how each of its tentacles suckers are actually barbed with teeth. Ugh. Then this gnarly shot of Wanda aiming red chaos magic. She's at the doorway of Illuminati HQ. Her face is bleeding like crazy, and separately she has black ink stains on her shirt. Behind her in the distance looks like one of the bells of Kamartaj. Perhaps after sacking that location and holding her seance there, she used that to access the gateway to this compound. But why does she want to get in here? Well, when the camera zooms into her eye, there's a brief image of two holding cells. These are Illuminati detention cells. Doctor Strange was cuffed in one of these, and in the TV spot, Christine Palmer works among other techs who hold America in another cell. So I think the reason Wanda hasn't been able to find a reality with her sons, the reason why her attempt to recreate Westview didn't work, is that the Illuminati are detaining Billy and Tommy here in these two cells. And for Wanda, that's especially infuriating because it's exactly what Hydra did to her and her twin brother, locking them up in adjacent cells. Like in the comic House of M, all of this madness comes from a denial by Professor X and by Doctor Strange to allow Wanda reality with her children. And it's gonna end with Wanda drastically warping all that reality. But in this case, I think a restoration of mutants alongside Avengers in the MCU. On to the final clip. Strange! <laughs> a version of Doctor Strange and Wong on this snowy mountaintop trying to rein in these demonic figures? These beings look like they're actually made of the same inky texture that the buildings and the other surfaces are melting into, as if this is the chaos that it's all bleeding into. Now the TV spot actually shows Strange facing another peak across the way with some winged devil at the peak of it. That spot also shows a close-up of Strange whose face is rotting away, looking a lot like his zombie Strange self in What If Episode 5. 
I point it out because the TV spot also includes a shot of Wanda looking especially zombie-like. Now, while Zombie Strange in that episode got devoured by ants, Zombie Wanda survived and she returned in the final episode. So I don't know if these are zombies as much as they're just animated corpses, but it is insane to see their souls so strong that they can keep their bodies intact long after their flesh should have expired. The final shot shows this rotting Strange blocking a rift in the darkness. Dozens of inky skeletons trying to shove out past him as skeleton arms fan out behind him, evoking the images of icon pose that he formed when fighting Thanos in Infinity War. Now counteracting that spell was the one time we saw the Soul Stone being used in the MCU. And I find it interesting that Strange's soul is all he has left. The film title comes together from hundreds of pieces, like the shattering and reassembling shards of reality in this movie, but this is the third title design we've seen. It's almost like the studio wants us to constantly reframe the reality in which we see this movie every time they talk about it. So folks, you gotta check out our new merch options, including two sick Mephisto designs at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars, subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching, bye.